Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. I am your host for today. Joining me, uh, joining me are my two buddies, Mr. Aaron, the voice now Kamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend Ferguson. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? My buddies. I miss you guys, you know. <laughs> I miss being in the same room with you guys and just, <laughs> and just yeah, just, just hanging out. Just miss... <laughs> I miss both of your 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 spirit, your your energy, and just I just I miss you both. <laughs> We're still doing this social distance Thursday live lesson, but you know what? Uh, we'll we'll try to help as much people as possible because what we do here at Thursday live lessons we answer any and all of your questions regarding the ukulele or regarding us or whatever it may be. You can ask us anything that you want. This is our kind of weekly state of ukulele on the ground address. Like whatever you guys want to talk about, we can talk about here. Um, also, we uh, you know we we do get questions uh, via email. We get questions you know uh, via voicemail, whatever. Um, and we are live, so you guys can type in your live questions and stuff. But basically, you guys have us for an hour. Whatever you guys want to talk about, we can. So go ahead, Kahai, give us our first question. Uh, so we didn't get mm, questions during the week, mm -hmm. but we had like the those student reviews from last week. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we got a couple of student reviews. So if you, um, you know, if you are listening to the show, if you're a watcher of the show, and you want to, you know, send in a student review for us to kind of review on uh, on Thursday Live, you totally can do that via the UU Plus forum. Okay, but um, our we have two for this week, and the first one that I want to review is um, is Wesley. So Wesley has uh, has given us student reviews before. He did a wider shade of pale, um, you know, and he's playing it on his eight string ukulele. So he's been working for a while on that Bach, um, you know, that Bach piece. So it's gl I'm glad to kind of see him you know, st do something fresh, do something new and stuff, just to kind of, you know, take away a little bit from a, uh, I'm, I'm sure the frustration, <laughs> you know, of, of a Bach piece because it's, Bach pieces are not are not simple. Now, you know he did a great job at at wider you know wider shade of pale because um I've been watching him do the um do the box so much that I forgot like how he played normally. <laughs> so watching him play normally, great <laughs> job, man. Yeah, yeah, you know like great job, great job. I you know I, I like um I liked your approach with this. I like how you know you want to you want to use the eight string ukulele you want to be able to experiment and you're doing all that stuff more power to you you know for uh for for doing that um some of the things that i do want to comment on of um one is you know it, this this is really weird coming from me <laughs> but like uh, that um you're basically watch your tempo <laughs> like it's uh, <laughs> it's it's a thing and i notice it's um especially uh noticeable when you're doing your finger picking and when you're going to a, a chord that needs like three or more fingers, okay? So when you're kind of getting into that, sometimes the, the chord change, you know, changing from one chord to the other, um, mutes, you know, the, mutes some of the strings that you're, you're finger picking. And it's more noticeable because you're finger picking, uh, meaning you're playing each string, you know? So there is some that I noticed that there's some kind of, uh, notes that weren't quite clean clean they were kind of muted and um and whenever those kind of not harder chords but those chords that are you know are that need a little bit more attention the um, the tempo seems to either drop or speed up you know and um and there were some kind of timing issues there but nothing too concerning you know noticeable but not concerning um strumming looks uh, looks pretty good um i would loosen up the hand a little bit more because when you're strumming you're kind of doing this which is not a bad thing um i just never see the thumb go anywhere past here and what that means is you're not twisting your wrist because if you are twisting your wrist the thumb should be down here you know what i mean so if you're doing this and kind of just doing that nothing wrong with strumming you know like this but you want to be able to loosen that hand a little bit more so that um you create a natural swing to the ukulele um and and a lot more uh control over you know over the over the tempo and which we talked about earlier um let's see other than that it should be fine so just watch some of those chords that you're playing and you know which ones I'm, I'm talking about i'm sure uh if you can just isolate those chord changes um you know watch that watch that video back isolate those chord changes that uh, that weren't quite clean and then maybe just practice just those two chords you know it's going from one to the other and one then back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until you can do it nice and clean 
and then uh, and then plug it back into the song and see how you know how well that does. But overall, I think pretty good. Just a little bit of cleaning up, man. What do you guys think? Do you guys see? Do you guys saw it? Yeah, yeah. I think um he he does like a A B A B kind of picking pattern, right? Mm-hmm, With his like mm-hmm. between his thumb and the rest of his fingers. Right, right. Uh, yeah. When he does that, like that picking sounds pretty solid, and it sounds like he's mm-hmm. picking the strings pretty evenly. But then when mm-hmm. he switches to like kind of the into out or like alternate picking yeah. style, it sometimes it seems like his his pointer and his middle finger are like are hitting the strings a little weak. So if, yeah. if anything, I would say like that's just what I would prefer is like him to get get it so yeah. it's like that is just as. Mm. like strong his picking on that mm. is just as strong as when he's yeah. doing his other picking but like yeah it, it it it's sounding pretty good like you know it's just like mm-hmm. these little mm-hmm. things that you gotta maybe mm, focus on and clean up a little bit yeah yeah he's really standing his ground with the i'm not gonna like plant my pinky down thing you know like <laughs> with, with the, the right hand and i mean yeah. his pinky finger is just there and i think a lot of that has to do with that too you know like it's kind of high up uh high up here and um if you're thinking about it if you're not like planting your you know your pinky down it's not and we've said this before it's not going to be um consistent and you can hear that you know and that's kind of what kahaya is talking about especially if you know with with the pointer finger like you said if you're using your four fingers to uh to kind of play um and you're not you know you're not anchoring your pinky finger it's it's very easy to kind of go out of um, um, out of place because if you're you know if you plant your pinky the reason you plant your pinky is so that things can kind of stay consistent your your hand is not moving anywhere so when you're doing this kind of free strokes your uh, y- your hand is going to be in all different kinds of you know if, in different kinds of positions plus your pointer finger all the way up here for you know for the C. So if you're if you're trying to do this where you're you know you, you want you want the thumb to be here and your pointer there it has to be something like uh, you have to kind of angle your your wrist so that each finger has its own space to kind of you know to move because if you don't angle your wrist up like this to do that and you just keep your wrists kind of straight here they're all going to kind of bump into each other okay so um, and and I'm not gonna be like no you gotta you gotta take your pinky you gotta like uh, you know you gotta anchor it down although that would work but if that's if that's not your thing if that you really don't want to do that then I suggest making sure that you figure out a way to be consistent with your uh, with your finger picking okay because the solution to it is plant your pinky but if that's not something you want you gotta figure out a way to do so without planking or yeah. planting plank <laughs> planking. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I think he can do it. You know, it's like doable, mm-hmm, but yeah. it's just like you're going to have to spend more time on that. Like, mm, yes, it's probably going to be like hours where you're just practicing that that picking pattern, you know, not even with mm. chords or anything. You're just like practicing yeah. with your right hand, just going over and over and over. And it should be like something where it's like do it while you're watching TV or do it yeah. while you're doing something else where at the end you can do it without even thinking about it right and then that, yeah that'll probably help too with your left hand because you can focus on your left hand instead of mm-hmm. trying to split your brain between both mm-hmm. yeah this this uh, is he on the chat right now um i don't think so i don't see him okay so yeah i just kind of wanted gonna... to know if yeah. he uh, i'm sure he practices sitting down you know like and, and standing up does make things a little bit more difficult especially finger picking and if you're you know if you're finger picking i know he has a strap and stuff if you kind of have it folding like like this it's a lot harder when you're standing up than when you're sitting down and having this like this ukulele nice and stable using your legs you know if uh, if it's like this kind of floating it uh, it it will move you know regardless if you have a strap or not so if this is already moving, you know, like uh, your your free strokes with your hand like this are already um, are already moving, and your ukulele is going to be moving too. That's that's another factor. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, uh, anything else before we move on? Uh, I don't think so. I again, it's like it sounds pretty good though. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of just like fine tuning. Yeah, fine tuning. Yeah, ones. that's. Yeah. I mean, if you know, he's not. <laughs> he's he's not just asking us to just pat him on the back and say hey just can you tell me good job on this video please <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like no yeah we're we're gonna take it we're gonna break it down so but good job you know like if uh if you weren't sending this to us to like critique if if you're just sending this to us like well can you you know like uh 
you 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 guys you guys want to hear me play a song <laughs> i'll be Maybe. like yeah that sounds pretty good, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yeah it sounds good but since yeah. you're sending it in for critique it's like we gotta and you know and that's me just kind of grasping the stuff to like uh to to critique but overall n- good job yeah yeah and then um, and then lots of good progress too you yeah, know? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. If, if you kind of take what what um feedback that you get and mm-hmm. actually apply it yeah uh, we, we've we've seen him pro, um, progress mm-hmm. pretty far yes. so yeah. yeah yeah look i mean for for example look at his uh um his left wrist it's mm-hmm. like nice and straight now you know he's holding mm-hmm. you know he's holding things a lot better even his right hand now, and that's why i'm like if you want to do that if you don't want to plan it that's totally fine because it's you know it's still it, it's it's there although it's kind of going out of position every now and then he has you know he's he's a trying lot less to than like before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so he's doing good you didn't get. Now let's move over to uh, to Renee. She um she did a minute long video doing Michelle, and she did um she did that app. What is that app? Kai, what is that called? Like, like acapella. The, the app. Acapella. Yeah, I think so. Great job. I I liked it actually. I liked um I like her take on it. Um, you know I like the use of the of the salts <laughs> to uh that that's, it's not a salt shaker. That what do you call those? The salt grinder, I guess. I like oh, yeah. salt grinder. It was really cool. Um, the only thing, because you know, because I have to make a critique. The only critique that I would have is um, I like you know, I like the rhythm, I like the strumming and stuff. Uh, maybe you know, and and you do kind of do this. Um, I I want to hear a difference between the two ukuleles, other than they sound different. You know, because the, there's two different ukes. One does sound you know different than the other, but I I want there to be a difference in say chords or the way that you know the rhythm that that you're you know that you're doing with one ukulele or the the notes that you're choosing with you know with with the other. So kind of like that, like you know, it's a simple. It doesn't even have to be super duper fancy. If one ukulele, if you're gonna stay with the uh stay with the chords if one ukulele can just kind of like set like a uh a good kind of tempo with just some down strums and then the other ukulele does like kind of the syncopated that makes all the difference already um it's just hearing the two ukes all those different sounding have the same kind of you know have the same kind of strum with the same chord um you know that might be like okay well it's, it's all right not saying that it was it was bad or anything but it that's that's the room for improvement is right there is to just kind of like okay cool so i i did these chords with this strum you know for uh, for for this so i'm going to use a different uke maybe just like finger pick it or something you know like uh have something kind, kind of different instead of just layering you know like one ukulele with another ukulele that has the same you know same kind of chords and and and, and picking in it so that's that's what i would do and she kind of you know does it differently some sometimes especially in the kind of picking or in the riff she kind of makes a diff, you know difference between the two ukuleles but i would kind of like to see more what do you guys think uh yeah um uh, the only thing i can really think of is that it's probably like a limit of the app itself but mm. I wanted to hear the whole song of like Renee playing the whole song, oh, yeah, yeah. and it just like kind of cuts out. Yeah, so it's like I-, I figured like, oh, that's probably like all the app allows you. But yeah. it'd be cool if she posted the full song or if she did it, you know, the full mm. song herself too. Yeah, so, yeah. I've been I've been watching a lot of Master Chef. See, this we're gonna deviate for a little bit. I've been watching a lot of not Master Chef was that one with like the Kitchen Stadium um, Iron Chef. I've been mean, watching mm-hmm. Iron Chef, <laughs> and I think it's that would be like my uh, my my critique every time. It's like I just I wish I had more because <laughs> 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 it's like this one minute video that Renee showed us is like oh man that was pretty good, but it was like one minute. So I think if I were ever on Iron Chef, it's like yeah this is great Bobby Flay, but can I like have like a whole you know like a whole Filipino party's worth of like, this food? <laughs> but and Bobby Flay is like. <laughs> I spent four hours making that plate for you, <laughs> and you want more? Like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's that's all. I just wanted to say that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, um, you know, it's it's uh, it was good. It was good. Good job, Renee. Yep. All right. Any uh, any questions from the audience? Because we are live, so the the audience can chat with us and stuff, and ask us any questions that they want. Yeah. Uh, re- well, they're they're all uh, UU Plus members, but they're mm-hmm. they're kind of asking where do they post these videos for student review. Kai, mm-hmm. you want to answer that for us? Yeah, there's a student review uh, section in the UU Plus forum, or you can post mm-hmm. it to the live lesson section too. Like, 
So mm -hmm. we'll see it on the live lesson questions, and then we'll answer it mm -hmm. on the next upcoming live lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something I think uh, some people are getting confused though is that they some people are posting to their like a homework uh, section that we have in the mm -hmm. UU Plus forum, and then they're yeah. also posting to their nope. own mm -hmm. like pra practice logs. Mm -hmm. And the practice logs are really for yourself. It's for to you yeah. to chart your own progress, you know, and to yeah. say like what you're doing every day. Uh, the homework stuff, uh, that's for like 101 and 102. It's We do get back to those, but we haven't uh, uh, been like really regular with those because like it was it was more for when we were streaming it live. Uh, but mm. if you do want us to give you feedback, we can. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I think the student reviews and the live lesson question section of the forum are better places to post if you want feedback, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other questions? Good job, uh, Kai. That was, a, that was all you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I just don't want people to be like, oh, I I don't know where I should post it. Like, I want yeah. feedback. And we yeah. want to give back, give feedback. Right, right. We want to do this. Yeah. So, like, yeah, those are the <laughs> places why, that we check. Why did they never pick my video to, to talk about on? Yeah, it's because of that. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> yeah. you know, we want yeah. videos like we want. We want to talk about stuff because <laughs> it. Yeah. So sometimes I check out people's practice logs and I think mm -hmm. like, oh, they're doing a really mm -hmm. good job, you know, and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to post like a reply there because mm -hmm. it's not really yeah. for us. It's more right. that's your own like individual, you know, thing. So it's like, yeah, I'm kind of that's that's where I think if you post the practice mm -hmm. uh, or student review and the, the live lesson questions. Like we feel mm -hmm. more ready to be like, oh, okay, we can take this for our next live mm -hmm. lesson and give you feedback, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I take from that is you're like the Santa Claus. You're like just always watching, you know, like making sure people are doing their thing. You're you're watching people's mm -hmm. uh you know, their practice logs and stuff. <laughs> like Kahai, oh geez, Kahai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speak it in there. <laughs> it sees you when you're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. He sees you when you're practicing. Yeah. He knows when you're not practicing. <laughs> there's there's sometimes where people send in, you know, feedback or they, they want something. And then I look at it, I'm like, ooh, I I'm not going to respond to this. And I usually pass it on to you or somebody mm -hmm. else because it sounds like they're like, can Aldrin tell me what I should do? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they probably won't be happy if I like, you know, I'm like, well, I'm you not Aldrin. Tell them you're Aldrin. But... <laughs> you know, but... Like, I think, I think I just, um, you know, I am the avatar for Ukulele Underground, <laughs> but I think they're asking, you know, just Ukulele Underground. Like, I think people just want a good, right answer. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Aldrin is the avatar. You can be Aldrin if you want to be Aldrin <laughs> yeah. for a day, just... for a week if you want to. Yeah. It's like they when imagine I... you like pulling all the pulleys and like making the site go. <laughs> when yeah, when I'm I reply, just the avatar. I'll reply signing everything. your name. Yeah, I'll <laughs> yeah. reply signing yeah. your name, but then the icon will be my face with doing i think i think it's still like the, the i was doing the finger pistols shooting at the camera so yeah. they'll get that yeah this should be a which aldrin you want to speak to <laughs> <laughs> like a high aldrin <laughs> the aaron aldrin yeah which which yeah. aldrin would you like to speak with that's <laughs> uh, any questions from the live chat uh so renee is on the yeah. chat Oh, nice. And she was saying that uh, at first she said, I don't know how to do harmony, uh, mm -hmm. but I think she was talking about all the things you told her, what she can mm -hmm. add on to her yeah, yeah. video. And she said that those things would make a huge difference. And yeah, it's, it's not about like harmony and, and different chords, like I was saying, even like different rhythms like that you can play around or different, like maybe a finger picking, like anything that would just kind of differentiate one from the other. Yeah. And then she she asked if she should try alternate chords on different ukes. So I guess playing like the, well, you know, chord, uh, playing a chord position on one uke and then playing another chord mm -hmm. position on another uke and then doing that, yes. bringing that out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's actually what I was talking about, like different inversions and stuff that you could do, you know, um, or or even just like adding a, uh, you know, um, uh, a chord or note from the scale like you know if you're playing a g7 for example you know what i mean like you can add 
like a C in there, like if you want to, or maybe, you know, play this C or this or anything. Like really just as long as it sounds good, because sometimes those don't sound that great. <laughs> like so <laughs> just make sure it sounds good. And uh you know, if it sounds good to you, that's that's fine. Cause... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But any anything, you know, but especially um inversions. Inversions sound really good. That's kind of what I do. Like when um when I'm tracking for um you know for for my own albums and stuff, I usually try to kind of play one and then play the other either with a different ukulele, you know, um play uh like in an, an, a different rhythm, but most of the time it's like two different inversions of it so that you hear two different kinds and you're not just stacking the same. Yeah. Uh Renee says I can duplicate myself 9 times, but anything Ooh. over 4 quickly turns into chaos yeah i mean i don't know if you've ever seen any of uh jacob collier's videos where like a hundred of them singing you know like mm -hmm. doing a hundred part harmony or whatever it may be but yeah if you're really interested in doing something like that check out jacob collier like that's yeah. he's like the man at like stacking stuff <laughs> there's and, and i like that renee is like uh mm -hmm. kind of venturing into this right like because mm -hmm. she she played her banjo ukulele in the video yeah. too and I thought, like, I told her in our our one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, class last week, I mm -hmm. thought that was, like, a really smart choice because it really fit the, the song, you know? Mm -hmm. And it added that, like, tonal difference to make yeah. a difference from, like, her normal uke. So yeah. that that's kind of the thing, though, that, um, like, people like Jacob Collier think about mm -hmm. is they think about all the different parts of the soundstage, right? So a yeah. lot of times if you listen to a song um, and there's guitar or something on it, it'll actually be double tracked, right? Where they play the guitar twice and they're mm. hard panning it left and right. So you're yeah, hearing yeah. this. The, it's like this, they're playing the same thing. But the if you isolated the left channel and the right channel, mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh, there's mm -hmm. little differences to what they're playing. You know, just a little like, mm -hmm. oh, that maybe that strum was like mm -hmm. a little bit off or that beat right. was a little bit off. And it mm -hmm. adds, it makes the whole thing sound fuller. So there's there's all these like tips and tricks. And I know Jacob goes like, mm -hmm. oh, if you just lower it by a couple of decibels and you change it to like a yeah. half semitone <laughs> down, he he knows like all these crazy things that you can really get into deep with it. Yeah, yeah. But um, if if you guys uh, you know if you guys want an example like. Uh, some of the um, play along videos that I record here, I actually really love playing with uh, with, with panning and, and and stereo effects and stuff. So um, if if you put on your headphones and listen to some of the um, the play along videos and kind of isolate left and right, I do different um, different strums like, because uh, I know for a fact that like if I teach a uh, here's the there's the dirty word of strumming pattern like you know I, if I do like a certain pattern for one side I'll do a different one for the other side just to kind of make it sound full yeah and um and when we do the lesson it's like oh you can do this or you can do this but actually in the play along like for the for the audio i'm doing both just so that you know you can kind of hear um one being uh what is the well this last one yeah this electric, yeah electric slide one electric slide there's one that's like a <laughs> and then there's the, the the left side is that and i think the right side is So it's two mm -hmm. different kind of strums and stuff. If uh, yeah, if you're interested, that's I don't know. I usually just do those for myself and just to make the track sound better. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of something that I would do for uh, for for the play long tracks. Cause it's fun. It's I don't want to just just here's here's the strum and then I add a guitar that has the, the doing the same thing and the bass. And then I sing and then it's done. And it's like no, I want to <laughs> have fun with it. Cause I don't know, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain um, panning? Oh, just okay. Renee asked in the chat. Um, panning and, and stereo and stuff means uh, you know you have the left and the right speaker you know um, with with your with your computer with the uh, uh, with headphones or anything like that anything that you would listen to so stereo is um, you know is getting those left and right and kind of playing with it yeah so in um, 
in a recording interface, uh, you, you can take a trap that you played and you can set it wherever, you know, wherever you feel like it should be. And the way that I see it, or the way to explain to me is that, um, I'm kind of thinking of the mix as kind of a stage, you know? So if you're on the stage and if someone's playing ukulele, where is that ukulele player going to be on the stage? If you don't mess with the, um, the panning, you know, either pan left or panning to the right, if you don't mess with that at all, it's just gonna be right smack dab in the center and in the middle, okay? So if you don't do anything at all with the panning and stereo, um, and if you add a guitar, a bass, singing, whatever, just on top of that, it'll just all be right in the middle. So imagine like um, four guys playing their instruments, not even like you know like next to each other it's like four guys in a like in a straight line like playing their instruments at you and that's basically what it sounds like it'll sound better if you kind of move those guys around like you know like in a stage so for me if i'm gonna do excuse me if i'm gonna do two ukuleles and i'm gonna have one you know if i'm gonna have that and the other one a little bit more fancy um, and because the ukulele is is the primary kind of instrument in this um, uh, in the play along, I like to put it at uh, between fifty to seventy five, which which means because it goes to like zero to one hundred on one side or zero to one hundred on the other side. So I like to hit fifty to seventy five on one side, and then put the other fifty to seventy five on the other side because that means it's like it's not quite all the way to the right where it would be 100 so that means the um the left side doesn't have that at all it's only it only exists on the right side and that's what 100 percent means um so i i have it so that it's set um a little bit louder on the right side so it gives kind of your uh, uh your ears this this weird appearance that it's it's oh it's right here like i can hear him over here like to the to the left or to the right or wherever you know it, it may be and it just kind of um it, it's it's part of like the mixing process and it's kind of like watching something live and, and uh and hearing the instruments kind of go around you and that's what stereo is <laughs> i like fooling around with it it's it's a lot of fun even like um i even do stereo with that uh, with 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 the singing with the uh, with the drums like i think with uh lenny played percussions on uh on that last track and I did like the uh, just the base of his um, of his cajon on one side, and then like the uh, the treble on the other side, making it kind of sound very like stereo. Um, the bass and things like that, I like to keep somewhat in the middle. I think his bass is just ten to the left. Um, the ukuleles are fifty to seventy-five left and right. Guitars, I like to put one hundred on the left and one hundred on the right because since guitars have a bigger range as the bass and the treble strings, I like that to um, to kind of really fill in all that space. And I will mix them both differently. Like um, the left left side guitar, just like I would with the uh, you know with, with the drums or whatever, it might be a little bit more bass heavy or treble heavy depending on where the drums are in the uh, in, in the mix so it sounds really full i want to get a good low to high end on each side but it, they're both different yeah <laughs> i get super nerdy with this oh yeah yeah <laughs> i just uh i just got a plug-in for yeah. my you know audio editing or my uh digital audio workstation mm -hmm. and yeah it's it's all the all it does is it helps you like select where the instrument is coming from in the sound stage mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. it gives you like a visual representation and you're like i want it a little bit more to the left and farther back or i want yeah. it closer to the center yeah. and stuff and yeah and yeah. when you if you just made everything right in the middle or you just made everything like where it's like nah, whatever the default settings it mm. it'll sound like it's like oh it's really overlapping and it's it, it's <laughs> almost like if you imagine if you listen to an orchestra and they were mm -hmm. all lined up down one single line and playing at you from that, right? It's like the reason mm -hmm. why an orchestra is spread out the way that they are is because it's like to optimize their sound, you know? Like flutes yeah. need to be closer because they're softer and you want to hear them more, yeah. like more on their parts. And then the louder instruments are put more to the back because you don't need to play them as mm -hmm. loud to get them to reverberate through the whole in concert hall. Mm -hmm. So like thinking mm. about all that stuff, it makes a, it can make a huge difference to your, your sound. You know, if you're crafting it, 
and you can get mm. like you said right like you can get really deep in the weeds of like oh i i put yeah. it just a few percent <laughs> up or i clicked a few percent down and i did all this stuff mm-hmm. or even like uh i like to do things where the instruments might go from like oh you're hearing it in your right and you're hearing it in your left so they cross over and they fade mm. into your your left side and they fade into uh, your right side you know too and it, like, <laughs> yeah it it's like stuff that like you don't hear if you're not wearing headphones but yeah mm-hmm. it's like to me it just yeah. I, I love adding those little sprinkles of details in you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah so listen to some of those tracks like those play along tracks and stuff that that we put out but listen to them with like some headphones and you'll see exactly what we mean um a really yeah. cool one that i want to share is uh a, a while back we did strawberry fields forever and i think that was one of like the the most experimental that I've ever gotten with that with with panning because um and I wanted to kind of do a throwback or a homage to like uh, how the Beatles kind of did theirs because uh Wait, Sergeant no, was Pepper, it huh? was it strawberry fields I think it was what well, I thought it was strawberry fields no which one is it uh there was not... one where I did like some weird weird panning. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not Lucy yeah Lucy, yeah, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy sorry Lucy, Lucy, in yeah, Lucy in the sky because um that uh that album sergeant pepper is like uh that was one of you know one of the first albums they really experimented with uh you know with with like stereo and mm-hmm. like with you know with, with their tracks and stuff so so back then i mean there was well like four track like recorders or two track recorders and stuff so that means you can only really stack like so much you know like on, on top of two at that or four you know on, on top of each other so if one like one track is to the left the other you know the other track has to be like two to the right or wherever it may be you can only pan two things so what they did was uh they took maybe like they recorded a bunch of stuff and they just like um condense it down to one track so for example <laughs> the yeah, like the drums is all in one track and if i think if you listen to um to lucy in the sky like the the um the beatles version uh or the original i should say <laughs> and uh if you listen to where the drums are it's really only in on one side it's oh, it's oh, kind oh. of interesting so i'm like okay cool so i'm gonna add drums to uh, to this track but i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna like condense all these too. drum parts and i'm gonna put it <laughs> only on one side and then this yeah. part comes on the other so like i just had fun with it and it was uh, i don't know I, that's something that makes you know makes my job that much that much more fun <laughs> just because like yeah. i can kind of do throwbacks like this just for myself it wasn't really for anybody else but this is like i think this sounds cool i might i might do this you know sometimes it's sometimes it's awesome sometimes it's really bad <laughs> sometimes i'm like that i wish i could redo that you know do, do that track because that's that was a bad decision that was a bad call uh-huh. to to mix it that way but whatever it's, it's fun you know and like yeah. i said it's only for me so <laughs> we also did oh well, i i had to do the audio for seasons of love Mm, oh yeah and that was like a huge collaboration Mm -hmm. and so in the original i guess if if you listen to like the official rent version Mm -hmm. they they did it kind of like as a chorus so the soundscape is kind of like a like a chorus Mm -hmm. and the girls are on all one side and the guys are on one side Ah. so i kind of replicated that too Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then also um there was a part in it where craig and sarah Mm -hmm. traded um Mm -hmm. riffs uh-huh. And so it it appears in the video visually mm-hmm. where Craig is playing and then mm-hmm. where, when Sarah's playing and it's on those sides where oh, I, cool. I panned it on those sides. So it goes like Craig, Sarah, Craig, Sarah, <laughs> and then them playing together went yeah. center. Did so you have like to like right, left, right, left, and then center. Did you have to isolate like like Craig's parts and then like and then take that out and put it in a different track and then take cause, cause or did they send you separate tracks? No, no, no. I think they sent me just one track so i just yeah I oh, just that's harder it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did like a fake version of it but it, i mean it it works right yeah that's cool panning it's it's fun kids <laughs> like, <laughs> panning is is so much fun and uh, around with it yeah mm-hmm. and, and then like some... and then also it, it helps you to um appreciate music more because the next time that you listen to a song you'll yeah. realize oh yeah the hi-hat is here yeah you yeah. know or like you know <laughs> And and the more that you can distinguish the different instruments and mm-hmm. really like listen for only that mm-hmm. instrument, the better you'll be as a musician too. Because yeah. when you're playing with other people, you have to be aware of what all the other instruments are doing and how you fit into that mix. Yeah. 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 I good I stuff. Think, <laughs> I think that's like something that people who learn by themselves 
have like a hard time is that Mm -hmm. they focus mostly on curing themselves and not curing Mm -hmm. other people so when they try to play with other people they have a hard time fitting in because they they haven't practiced listening to other people like intentionally listening to other people and listening Mm -hmm. to where you fit in in the mix right like Mm -hmm. trying to think about that like oh Mm-hmm. Well, this person is soloing, so I'm going to back off a little bit or well, mm-hmm. I can punch in a little bit here, you know, just to beef yeah. it up. So there's yeah. all these mm-hmm. things that you, you really have to think about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fun. And that last, um, it's one of the first times I did this, but that last video, the electric slide video, I thought the uh, the picking was, was a little weak, you know? So like I, I doubled it up. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm sure some people noticed. It's uh, I played that. But I also played the um, the the octave, and I did like a slight pan of like I think ten on one side, uh-huh. and it's like and combining it together, it's like yeah, that sounds way beefier. Sounds like, yeah. It's just like it just wasn't enough for me. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we mean, Renee. We're like, yeah, you know, you can just kind of mix it up a little bit instead of just kind of playing the same thing twice on top of each other, you know. Yeah. It's uh it's this it's the same thing like when you hear uh or when you go to to the Hawaii um ukulele festival, you know, where there's like like the um the Roy Sakuma like army <laughs> like all playing <laughs> the same chord at the same time. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome or to any, see. Any yeah. ukulele club. That's true, any ukulele <laughs> club. It's Everybody kinda cool to see. The same thing. But it's like, okay, well, you know. And you can tell like when when uh one of the kids are like uh, really good, <laughs> like they'll They'll either do a different strum or they'll do like a, a, a an inversion to like what, what they're playing. And then yeah. I always notice, I'm like, oh, look at that kid right there. He's, <laughs> the kid he's trying bored. to break up the monotony. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we talked about that um, in, in the past couple of weeks where like, oh, you know, like a professional will kind of, you know, like do do something else with, you know, with, with the rhythm or whatever, mm-hmm. other than just kind of playing that the, the strumming mm-hmm. pattern. Mm-hmm. I think I think even when we did the podcast with Kanihu, right? He mm-hmm. said like, "Oh, I try to listen to what the person is playing and fill mm-hmm. in the spots that he's not, you know, cuz yeah. why would I double up on what he's already doing?" It's true. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it if you listen to other people and you try to accommodate them, I think that mm-hmm. makes you a better musician than if you try just listen to yourself and it's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, but what what can I do to stand out more in the crowd or something? It's like, mm-hmm. well, you can just play louder then, or you can play, you know, whatever. I think those things are mm, mm-hmm. easier fixes. Like the you can figure out ways to do it easier. But really, the nuance of like, oh, how do I make the group as a whole sound better? Is like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. takes a little bit more thought and a little bit more work. Mm-hmm. Yep. Speaking of Kenny, I missed that guy because uh, next month. We have kind of a funky, you know, funkier kind of song that has a funky bass line. And because Kanihu is not here to record that part, I have to do the bass line. <laughs> it's, 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 it's something. Can't, can't you just... Because <laughs> uh... I finished the track last weekend and I'm like, this is... Wow, I, I do not have what they call soul. <laughs> or, I don't have the funk. Like I don't have the groove. It is just like, you're, oh, how do you do this? <laughs> it's like you're doing the Fortnite backpack kid dance, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, that's not exactly it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Renee. So Renee said that uh, she used the acapella app as an mm-hmm. excuse to buy her very own cowbell. And she said, uh, yeah. it's awesome, but sometimes it overwhelms. If I adjust the panning, would that help soften it? Um, no, you'd have to soften it um, in, volume. It's in volume, in its own track. Yeah. yeah. And if but you, you could. I, <laughs> I don't know if acapella allows you to do that. If you can, mm. the easy fix for that, or yeah, it's not the softer. E- well, or you play it softer, but that might be hard too. Like, cowbells are loud no matter what. <laughs> so you might have to record hit record and run back into the back of the room like just get farther away the farther away from a mic you get the softer it will be so yeah yeah. yep yeah it's it's are you gonna record fear the reaper (laughs) 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 i hope so i hope so (laughs) should should we make a, a like a video 
in, like a play along where it's just a medley of all the songs that have cowbell in it. <laughs> a cowbell <laughs> featured play along. Yeah. Yeah. I want some. Yeah, I want to see other people like kind of make a play along. I, maybe I should ask like Connie Lea, like, hey, you know, maybe we should uh, do a contest where people like make make videos like that, you know, make multi level videos and whatnot, and we'll give a uke away. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that <laughs> would like, be cool, though. He said, he said on this episode, like, no, don't quote <laughs> me on that. I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> I gotta cover my tracks here. Yeah, I'm just like, you know, what would be cool because it would be. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we have we have to put on a uh what is it like a tag at the end and it's yeah, like this... we're not responsible for anything yeah. we said on the podcast yeah, a disclaimer <laughs> yeah yeah it's just, lots of things would be cool you know <laughs> yeah jake being the you know being the main teacher for the site would be cool also <laughs> <laughs> wink wink come on <laughs> Yeah, Jake. Come on, man. You're not touring right now, right? You can make a few videos, <laughs> you can make a few videos right? <laughs> yeah. Old buddy. <laughs> friend. Close person to friend. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so any que- any other questions? Uh Kenneth asked if he's like stuck, he has no progress. He says he's mm-hmm. if he's in on a plateau, uh yeah. would a one on one lesson or I, I think he means a private lesson, though. Would mm-hmm. a private lesson help? Oh yeah, well, definitely. It would. I mean, <laughs> even I've, if you're not stuck. <laughs> yeah, even if you're not. Even just if you're not in. stuck, it just it just helps. I mean, you know, because we could kind of uh, put together a personal, uh, you know, personal workout for you. <laughs> you know, to uh, to to kind of follow or um, you know, or if there's a certain song that you're interested in or a certain genre that you want to start to get into, I can definitely lead you in the right direction. So. Just book something and we'll we'll figure it out. Because that could just be like, what you know, what are you doing right now? And we can just really hone in on maybe there's something that you're not doing, or maybe there's something that you're doing too much of, or you know, yeah, you figure out what where where you can go next. That's that's easy. <laughs> yeah, I think I was We've telling helped some... tens of people in the past. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, I think you could say hundreds, yeah. hundreds, yeah, thousands. Yeah. 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 But live private lesson, yeah, I guess so. It's been it's been going for a while, and I see a lot of new faces, especially in the past like four months. I wonder mm-hmm. why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would... Hundreds definitely, yeah. Uh, thousands with Maybe. the website, yeah, yeah, website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hundreds of thousands with the YouTube channel. I think. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And so I thank hope... you, thank you, Aaron, for making me feel better about that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we've at least helped thousands of people to chunk at least <laughs> mm-hmm. or I've, I've at least helped you know hundreds I, I assume by now to correct theirs <laughs> yeah <laughs> like just via the the uh the private lesson because i mean we've done like lessons on chunk and stuff and the videos are there but i mean to, you know just this week like from monday monday and tuesday i've had somebody come in like i how do i how do i chunk i'm like okay like I got you. I'm not gonna be like, hey, we have a lesson on that. You can watch that. Don't waste my time. Like, no, no, I'll, I'll help you. <laughs> you know, because uh, yeah, at this point, it's like, I I love doing it's that, especially kinda... yeah, it's, especially stuff like chunk or how do I hold it or how do I strum. It's one of those like, oh, we got this. We got 15. You got 15 minutes. Sit down. Let me show you. You know, like, <laughs> five minutes later. Yeah. Like, what else do you need? <laughs> <laughs> what else do we talk about? Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 great. And you know and um. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of telling also to kind of only really see those people once or twice. And then once they kind of got it, I never see them again. I just um, just chalk it up to like, okay, cool. That's where they were stuck. They they consulted with me. They're unstuck. And then they're doing their own thing, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I was telling somebody, though, like uh, like Kenneth, you know, he said that mm-hmm. he's uh, plateaued or he's stuck there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was telling somebody else, I think, that we have like a, a – kid in our one-on-one class Mm -hmm. and what i like about him is that he like comes every few weeks and he goes okay i learned the last song you taught me what song should i learn next right yeah and you just throw at him like song suggestions until he's like okay i like that one and then he you know we don't see him for another another week comes (laughs) back and then he's like oh okay this is how much i got and you tell him like Mm -hmm. okay fix this and then he goes away he works on it comes back and he's like okay i got this down now and then he's like what song do i learn next and I think that, yeah, that's the, if you want to 
get better like that's all you have to do is just be like yeah. oh what song do i need to learn you know or like what yeah. song will help me be a better player you know and we can definitely yeah. give you suggestions for that yeah. there's always there's always a next level you know what i mean like if you feel like you're stuck somewhere or if you feel like you're plat you've plateaued and stuff i mean there's you know if there's a bunch of places where you can go you might have just you know last week we talked about the tree you might as you, you you know you might have just reached just the top of your uh, your your trunk or whatever, and now you need to kind of branch out. So you just never know, you know. And I can um, definitely help you grow some branches if you know what I mean. It might it might be too that like uh, and not not to be like down on people, but it might be that you like reach the top of your tree and you're like, yeah, I made it, and then not realizing <laughs> that there's like a huge koa tree right next to you or something, you know. And it's like, okay, yeah. now you gotta go to that tree or go wherever so <laughs> yeah. sometimes i think or, people feel like they reach the top and then they don't see that there is like oh there's another yeah. level above you you yeah. know yeah or grow a different branch you know what i mean like that's really mm -hmm. it if like if you're if you reach the plateau i mean you know guys like jake or guys like um uh like byron yasu i was just watching like their ukulele friends live on facebook and stuff and they're talking about like stuff that they're working on and stuff that they're doing mm -hmm. so you know you got those guys who've been playing ukulele for like 50 years 60 years like who knows and um and they're constantly working on things and they're constantly getting better so like there's definitely something you know that, that you can do or something that you know you can uh, you can get better at or something that you can improve or something new to learn yeah mm -hmm. And then the point is to just keep it fun for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, mm -hmm. you probably picked up ukulele because you thought that, hey, that looks fun. So if you yeah. can keep doing that, then mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you end up or, you know, if yeah. you, if you reached any kind of like the pinnacle of whatever it is, it's, <laughs> it's kind of just, if you're having fun with it and if you can figure out ways to continue to have fun, yeah. then, <laughs> then that's it. That's you're, you're doing it. <laughs> yeah. But that I, Taiwanese kid, that Taiwanese ten-year-old kid, is having way more fun than me. How come I'm yeah, not having oh, that I'm much fun? Throw, <laughs> I want to have that away. much fun. <laughs> Never gonna get there. <laughs> yeah. um, it's you know, it's just, that's everyone's got their own journey. That's that's mm -hmm. really all it is. He's having fun in his own way. There's got to be a way for you to have just as much fun as he is. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna sound like um uh, I am gonna sound like a nerd by saying this. But there is a. Uh, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> no, it, it's not that exciting. There's a. Uh, I learned all my life lessons from anime. <laughs> so there, right? there's a. Okay. Sound good so far. <laughs> yeah. There's there's a volleyball anime uh, called Haikyuu. and um, mm -hmm. in it, like the players, you know, they they're in high school and they're trying to get to like the national level, and when they kind of reach that level, they talk about like, oh, it's the reason there's fun in being really good at your playing because yeah. uh, what it allows you to do is have freedom, right? Have the freedom yeah. of choice of what you want to mm -hmm. play and what you want to, how you want to express yourself. So I feel like music is the same way where I think people who look at it and they're like, Oh, that person looks like they're having so much mm -hmm. fun at, at that level. It's like, Oh yeah, it's because they are, you know, it's mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they spent the time to get to that level to where they can be like, Oh, if I want to play it like this, I can play it like this. If I want to mm -hmm. play it like this, I can play it like this. But mm -hmm. if you're at a level that's like lower, you're probably still working out how to translate it from like the sound that you have in your head to the sound that you're producing, right? And that can be like frustrating when you don't get it one for one. But don't take it as like a hardship. Like that's all that everybody learns to do that. And if you can have fun while you're learning to do that too, it's like you'll enjoy the whole journey right you won't mm -hmm. just enjoy the fact that it's like oh, i i finally won i beat everybody at ukulele <laughs> if you're looking at that it's like uh there probably isn't gonna be that you know you're not you're not gonna reach that right. take yeah. that taiwanese kid <laughs> <laughs> i think in in that that volleyball anime like yeah. uh, at one point like uh somebody asked one of the main characters like is there a reason why you like work hard so hard and do this stuff? Like, isn't this just for practice? This isn't actually a, a real game, you know? And he says like, is there a reason why you shouldn't work hard? And like, is yeah. there a reason why you shouldn't want to be better? It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah. Like it, if you can have fun with the idea that, oh, I'm, I'm working hard so I can mm -hmm. improve myself, you know, 
It's not so you can get the the trophy at the end or whatever the ribbon. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I just want to be a better musician. It's like I think that will get you through like a lot, you know, like mm-hmm. that that'll help you <clears throat> stay on track and help you mm-hmm. see where where you're gonna be at the end, you know. Or there is no mm-hmm. end. You you just keep moving forward. Yeah. Did he like? Like push up his glasses when he said before he said that. No, <laughs> actually, <laughs> the... no, no, no. Like there's a there's like an anime like yeah. like before they say something you know oh. like, like the setup it, yeah the uh, setup they did a push up the, yeah. and then like the, the glass like like uh, um, sparkles and stuff like um, <laughs> yeah. the the only character who wears uh, glasses in that since they're playing volleyball he ends up yeah. getting sports goggles so he can't actually push it closer to his face it, it just yeah. sticks right to his face yeah yep yeah those are cool man tell Clyde Drexler from the 90s you know like <laughs> that's what those goggles are really cool <laughs> do people still use that? I don't I don't follow sports or do sports of any kind get anymore. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah I guess that's true yeah. They, yeah back then there was like goggles and stuff and people wore them you know and I remember like like watching basketball back in the day with my dad and it's like what is that why is he wearing that <laughs> I, but yeah i don't i don't see them anymore i wonder if they're still around i yeah. think the reason why i like archery yeah. is because they like there's archers i was telling aaron this that are pretty much blind like they can't actually see the target and mm-hmm. when they're aiming for the target they say they say like I see like a little yellow smudge and that's what I aim for and they hit it like they, they're like some of the yeah. best in the world so I I've tried other sports where I need to get contacts and do stuff and I'm like mm, not for me I just rather not be able to see what I'm actually doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah ah, you get that muscle questions? memory down <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, questions from the audience um or else we're just gonna talk about anime this whole time. I got a, <laughs> had a Prince of Tennis reference just queued up. If no one asks anything, <laughs> it, it's, I think uh, <laughs> so. We we talked about like doing a, a play along with Cowbell, and yeah. everybody's like saying what songs we should do with all these different. Fear Cowbell the Reaper, songs. man. I mean, that's like, <laughs> if that's not on the top of everyone's Cowbell list, I don't I don't know what is. I, you don't and have the fever don't, apparently. <laughs> don't turn it down. <laughs> yeah. Don't walk away from your app and play it in the back of the room. <laughs> Go right up to the uh, right yeah. up to the phone phone's microphone. Just <laughs> do it. Just feel the room. You know, even just just <laughs> double it up, triple yeah, it double, up, <laughs> double it up. You know, maybe maybe hit the uh, hit the inversion on the cowbell. <laughs> cowbell inversion. You know, you never know. Maybe it'll sound good and pan it. You know, like from <laughs> <laughs> yeah. make a sweeping pan like Kai did. Make it go from left yeah. to right and fade it in the right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny because you're like saying stuff like that but i bet like people like jacob collier have actually done stuff like that right <laughs> like yeah with with cowbell and all that stuff it's like oh man yeah why why would you do that nobody no. i i think uh one of his songs he said that he like put in if you listen to the individual lyrics mm-hmm. for all the different parts that he's singing in acapella like mm-hmm. you know he he's saying just like a ta on here and then uh, the yeah. on here and stuff if you put on uh, together all the vowels it mm. makes a whole new song that he's trying to <laughs> reference and he said like but nobody knows that and nobody like i put this song up and nobody in the comments uh, like found that or figured it out but it just like mm-hmm. that's just a little tidbit just for me just like <laughs> so i can get the satisfaction of like oh i did that i put yeah. in that little thing in there yeah <sighs> Yeah, mm-hmm. you guys should definitely check out Jacob Collier if you guys like like layering stuff and just music in general. Like guys, you guys the man. Start mm-hmm. out with um, I really like his Moon River, like uh, a uh, cover. Mm-hmm. That was that's the one with like the <clears throat> like the microtones in it. Like I think it it shifts keys like just a half of a half step <laughs> or something. It's, it's insane. <laughs> Like what? It, Why would you do that? Like, you can't even perform that. <laughs> he uh, his song "Hideaway," yeah. I think it starts on so standard tuning is four forty, right? Yeah. I think it starts at four thirty five, <laughs> and then part of the song as the song plays, it shifts up to four forty or something like that. Yeah. 
And the reason why he said he did that is because he wanted it to feel like you're kind of coming out of your room and it's like the morning sun is rising up. So you wow. get that feeling of like coming out. But it's like, yeah, nobody's going to notice that. Who's going to be like, That's a fast like, way of saying oh. just because I can. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Just because I wanted to. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, it, it's so funny that um, there's videos of him doing an interview with another person who's like really good at theory. And that guy mm-hmm. asked him like, oh, so did you do this with this idea in your head or did you do this or stuff? And Jacob, a lot of times he's just like, eh, it like sounded good. So that's why I did that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I just like that chord or I, I just like that thing. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just specifically yeah. a question to you, Kahai. If you had to pick one, Adam Neely or Jacob Collier? <laughs> You can only keep uh, one in this world. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the other one doesn't exist. If you take one, the other one doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, Who do you pick? That's brutal. <laughs> Just for Kahai only. Because I know he's a huge fan of both of those guys. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I the other exists. Which uh, The other doesn't exist. Whichever one you don't pick, it doesn't oh. exist. You can only choose. There's only room in this world for one of those two big brains. <laughs> Per, like oh it's so hard because personally i think like i would pick adam neely because i i've learned a ton from him like uh yeah. his uh, videos that he teaches online and stuff i just mm. learned a lot from him mm. but like yeah jacob collier like i almost feel like i would be doing a disservice to the world if <laughs> to i the world because i yeah, picked yeah. adam neely right it's like the fact <laughs> that he wouldn't exist would make yeah. the world a less bright place <laughs> yeah and so many other musicians like wouldn't be inspired by him right and that's stuff true. and like yeah. you learn from him so it's like oh man yeah that's that's a hard question i guess like <laughs> personally yeah it is just like i don't need leave but oh, yeah you just robbed the whole world of uh <laughs> of, of good music guy well <laughs> i hope you're happy i hope well, you're happy with the decisions that you made <laughs> That's like what, like four more Grammys to go around to other people. <laughs> to other so, people. Yeah. Other maybe less deserving. <laughs> well, they, but then they, if he doesn't exist, then it doesn't matter. I guess they so. Are, I guess so. They are pretty good <laughs> in, in comparison to everyone else. To, uh, to not having Jacob Collier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like he brings up the average. So like yeah. you know if he if he's not in the picture then. Like everybody doesn't have to hold themselves to as high of a standard. (laughs) (laughs) You remember when we didn't have to do microtonal songs? Oh man, those were the days. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Today, Ryan um, sent me a video of, uh, it's like that that guy, Jack Conte. Mm -hmm. He's like the founder of Patreon. Mm-hmm. But he's he's also in like Pomplamoose and um Scary, Scary Pockets. Pockets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um he like he did a talk, um, kind of like talking about all of his failures instead of his successes because he's mm-hmm. had like, you know, some great successes, but nobody talks about their like multitude of failures. Yeah. Nobody and, talks about um, poor thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> and so like he was he was like kind of explaining that like just as as a creative person, um, sort of the reason why he started Patreon was because mm-hmm. he has like all of these ideas in him and he has to do them. And some of them are flops and some of them are successes, but more flops than successes. And like he just couldn't make a living with that many flops. And like mm-hmm. I, he, he was to the point where like he spent so much time and effort on like a particular project that he wasn't even sure if anybody would ever watch. And so like, <laughs> he was like, May, you know, maybe if some of my fans at least just like, let me do the thing that I want to mm. do anyway. And like, mm. I don't care if it's successful or not. Like if a li- everybody just contributes a little to the fact that I want to do this and I have to do this, <laughs> then like, you know, that th- it, it'll be okay. I'll be able to like eat at least, you know? Yeah. And so that's, that's how Patreon came about. Mm. It was like him and it, his friend who coded the, the, um, the website. And so, yeah, it's Ryan was kind of saying like this, his story kind of feels like you because, um, you do that kind of thing too, where, where like <laughs> I have an idea in my head and I 
can't not do it you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll do it just for me and nobody else will even realize how much effort <laughs> went into that but like yeah. i you know i don't care i'm just gonna right, right. do it so <laughs> yeah you too <laughs> like with like the you know i think of most of us yeah think, yeah everybody yeah, uh, yeah. kahai and you yeah. <laughs> you know those little <laughs> things that if you're a creative person you just yeah. have the idea just and you do. just kind of have to do it <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. whether or not anybody will appreciate it like i'll appreciate myself yeah. you know <laughs> that's like that's that's how my, my youtube channel got started is like i need i've written all these things and my friends are like oh you know can, is there somewhere we can like watch you play that so that you know we don't have to call you over to our dorm so that you know like have you play yeah. and stuff I'm like uh I've, i'll do it on youtube baby and then that's how my youtube got started <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. I think we 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 we've, we've talked about it too, right? Where it's like sometimes you have that creative itch, and mm-hmm. you have like something that you have to do, though, like you know, work that you have to put in. And like mm-hmm. I, I talked to Aaron, I think about this. It's like sometimes it's uh, more efficient to get that creative itch out of the way. Because otherwise, like, while you're working, right? It's going to eat at you. Yeah. It's going to keep itching. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I totally know that feeling where it's just, like, it's so suffocating where it's, like, and it feels, the work feels even more (laughs) grueling because it's just, like, oh, I can't wait to, like, get to, yeah, get to get (laughs) that to that or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, if you have that, you know, in you, it's kind of just, it is worth it just to get it out, you know, even if it doesn't turn out to anything i I was gonna talk about like our last songwriting thing i don't know if i mentioned this so my song is about two minutes long you know like Mm -hmm. the last song that i wrote but i have besides my other projects i have like about 12 minutes of other con like other (laughs) pieces of that same you know kind of song or stuff and there's little Mm -hmm. variations and little things that like i made but then you know i just like okay put it to the side i don't know it doesn't really work right now or oh yeah maybe i'll come back to this or whatever but then eventually like it's kind of like i chipped away enough until it's like oh it's looking like a song now you know so i i think there is like some where it's just like you just got to get it out because if not Mm -hmm. it's just going to be picking at your brain the entire time yeah and then that also too kind of connects with the idea of like plateauing like maybe it isn't a plateau it's it's maybe it's just like you know nobody talks about all the failures that you have in between your successes you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and so um so maybe it's just that like everybody experiences it but everybody thinks like everybody looks at other people and say like only sees all of their highlights the success yeah and and thinks like oh man th- this person just like highlight after highlight like their their mm-hmm. whole life is like that but in reality nobody's life is like that no so you're gonna grind for a long long time yeah and then maybe have a little blip and then it's over <laughs> and then, back to grind and then again. you gotta go grind again yeah. so like maybe maybe that's um also what you're kind of describing as a plateau it might not be a plateau at all maybe that's just part of the the, the your progress mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, all right on that note we gotta get going it's uh mm-hmm. it's 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 past our bedtime kids <laughs> <laughs> But uh, in just 15 minutes at 2.20, we will be doing one-on-one coaching. So if you have stuff like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm plateauing, you know, I would like some help. Now would be the time that that <laughs> would be the place to uh, to to address stuff like that. Or um, you can book a private lesson if, you know, if you don't like talking in front of strangers and, and sharing, you know, your, uh, you know, your failures, quote unquote, or whatever. But um, yeah, so we'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for all the people who are listening to this video podcast. And thank you for watching, um, you know, via Ukulele Underground. Check out ukuleleunderground.com for more. Have a great one, guys. Aloha.